Everybody loves pizza, but not everybody loves vegetables. So what if you could disguise your vegetables to look like pizza? Now that sounds like a winning idea. Today I'm going to show you how to make a cauliflower pizza. Now these are very popular at the moment amongst people who follow paleo diets and they have some great recipes out there, but they have eggs and cheese in it. So I'm going to make one without those ingredients. So this will also be nut free. Some of the vegan recipes have nuts in it. And it's my goal to create something that everyone can eat. So first of all, take yourself a whole cauliflower, remove the green stuff. And cauliflower is such a great vegetable because it has a pretty neutral taste. I'm gonna blitz this up in the food processor until it resembles couscous or rice. And that in itself might be a game changer for you. Imagine if you replaced any dish that you normally would use rice for, for cauliflower. Straight away you've cut back on calories, you've increased your vegetable content, and what more can you say? That sounds like a win-win to me. So it's important to chop this into smaller florets so it actually fits in the food processor. Just a rough chop. Who knew that the humble cauliflower would become so popular? You could make fried rice using cauliflower instead of regular rice. No, I'm not against rice, but for many people who are trying to watch their calorie intake or just eat something that's a little bit more easier to digest, this is the ticket. Okay, I've got a pretty big uh, food processor bowl you might find that you need to blend this in batches. I might find I need to blend it in batches. So it's pretty quick. Have a look at the consistency of that. Looks like rice to me. You could eat that raw or you could steam that. What I'm actually making today is a cooked pizza because I want to roast some of the vegetables. So I'm going to just dip this in some boiling water. You could steam it if you like. Um, a spatula would be better. I'll grab a spatula. Um. Might as well grab all these little bits here. And I'm going to bake this in the oven, but I have made it as a raw base and used the dehydrator. So you can do both. Depends if you're a raw food purist or whether you want to have the roasted vegetables. So it sounds like my kettle's ready. Almost done. I'm going to blend up an onion. I'm doing it this way because I just think it's quicker. It's basically cooking it. But I don't need to use a microwave, preferable not to use a microwave. I don't need to steam it, so I'm just going to leave that sit there for a couple of minutes and then strain it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, I want this pizza to taste authentically Italian. So the flavours of oregano, garlic, olive oil and onion are going to be incorporated into the base. So everyone knows a good pizza starts with a delicious base. So today's no exception. Now over here you'll notice I've got some dried oregano, which is great. It has a, a quite a nice concentrated flavor. See how they're tiny little flecks? This is fresh oregano I've picked from the garden this morning. 
And actually, the dried oregano is much more concentrated in flavour. I like to use both, but in this recipe for the base, actually, let's use both. But definitely put the dried oregano in there. Just might make it a little bit green. Okay, so I'll just blend up my onion. That should do. What's giving this pizza a cheesy taste is the nutritional yeast that I'm going to add. So about a quarter of a cup. Let's check on the cauliflower first of all. Looks like some kind of cauliflower soup. Yep. So it is going to cook in the oven, but actually what I wanted to do was to cook it a little bit here so I can squeeze off the liquid. I'm going to add two to three cloves of garlic to the base. And I'll put it in here because I don't want big chunks. I'd like it nicely incorporated. So this is the flavor. Cauliflower is neutral. These flavours, they just smell authentically Italian. You could use mixed spice as well, not just oregano. <laughs> I love it how more comes out of the sides and the trapdoor opening than in the bottom because I'm not peeling it. It's probably just laziness. All right. Blend it up again. Breathing deeply, it smells beautiful. Okay, I'm going to strain the cauliflower. Yeah, the problem is that's new for me, so it's not, not so easy. Okay. Actually, the shape of this sieve makes it easier to push the liquid out. So it wasn't easy to put it in. Okay. All right, I want to squeeze out the extra moisture with a clean tea towel. And we have a funny thing in our house. We like to iron the tea towels as a method of sterilizing them. So I don't know if you do that as well. So it is hot, so you could let that sit a little bit, but I'm not too heat sensitive. Oh, maybe I am. Man, that is really hot. <gasps> okay. I'm just going to ditch that. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool and come back to squeeze that because actually it's really hot. But what I do wanna do with that liquid is soak the chia seeds. Chia seeds come in white or black. I'd like to use the white ones because I don't really want to make the base look black. There's no problem with it. Uh, I might use a third of a cup of chia seeds. Let's see how we go with that. Why are we using chia seeds? 
as they absorb the moisture, they're going to form a, kind of like a gel and that's going to help set the base. Now, a way to make this firmer would be to add nuts, but remember we're making a nut-free pizza base. And I could just add water, but why waste all the juices from here? So I drained off the liquid that it was cooked with, and now what I'm squeezing out is actually the vegetable juice. Okay, so that's enough. To prepare either some pumpkin or some sweet potato which is going to go on the top. I'm going to pre-roast the sweet potato so that when the completed toppings are put on the whole thing won't need to be roasted for too long and that way you could add um, more raw vegetables and keep them in their raw state. Sweet potato is not one of the ones that I'd like to have raw. I'm going to put this on a baking tray, pop it in the oven. It can roast the same time as the pizza base is roasting. So I'm, I'm cutting them as uniformly as possible. So if they're the same size, they'll roast and cook at the same time. I'm not worried if I don't use all of this because leftover sweet potato is great on a salad. So I'll just get some baking paper, put that in my tray. I could drizzle some olive oil and salt, but I think that's fine like that. Better get the oven on. So the chia seeds seem to have done their work and absorbed their liquid. I want to make this as dry as possible so it doesn't need to be in the oven for too long. So I'm going to place that in the bowl with our flavouring. It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> not elegant. Looks like some kind of magic trick and then the cauliflower appears. Done. So when I do the washing there needs to be um, a food wash so I wash the tea towels and all that kind of thing separately because often there's strange items like bits of cauliflower in them. nutritional yeast so that was about a quarter of a cup this is the onion and spice mix I think I haven't put in yet is salt and pepper can you smell that can't wait for the days where we have interactive TVs. Actually, they probably exist today where the smells come through the TV. <laughs> can reach out and touch. All right, actually what I'm gonna do here is get in here with my hands. So I'll just make sure that my hands are clean again. And I've got some coconut flour here which I don't always use, but coconut flour is known for sucking all the moisture out of any situation. So if I hadn't squeezed this dry enough, 
there's too much liquid, I know that that's my fallback plan to dry it out with a little bit of coconut flour. Okay, this is the part where you can get your kids involved, make sure their hands are clean, and say, hey, help mummy play with the food and squeeze it. So what I'm doing is really getting those chia seeds mixed throughout. And I'm just gonna leave them out big chunks. And that's pretty much it. Salt and pepper. A little cheat trick, it's combined. I love my pink Himalayan salt. And that's what I love about making food yourself. You tailor it to your own tastes. A uh, brother-in-law of mine, he's got kidney issues, so we have to watch the salt for him. Me, I do lots of exercise, hot yoga. I feel I need extra salt. So I've got my pizza tray. It doesn't have to be round. You could use a rectangle or one. And we'll just spread that on. So you can see the little flecks of green from the fresh oregano. It looks quite nice. So I know I talked about coconut flour and didn't use it, but you could have that there as a standby. Look, I've made uh, chopped chip cookies out of chickpeas, and then someone said to me, Oh, can we use white navy beans? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I gave that a try, but they're a different consistency. It was too liquid. So how did I fix it? I just used coconut flour. That came to the rescue. So just a good thing to keep in mind when it's not possible to squeeze off extra liquid. Okay, I think that's about it. It's a pretty chunky base. So that goes in the oven, and I can't do an exact time because it's going to depend on how much liquid you have in there, how many, how many chia seeds, if you put the coconut flour. But I'm thinking about 30 minutes, but I'll check back in 20 minutes and see how it's going. 180 degrees. One hundred and eighty degrees Celsius is just a moderate oven. I've created this little toilet seat cover, not really, but I've cut a hole out of it because I want the middle to cook a little bit more than the outside. They're naturally gonna brown, but because it's going in the oven twice, the first time now to cook a bit, the second time with the toppings, I just want the edges not to be so cooked so they can brown up later on, okay? Best way is just to cover it. I'll just put that back in. I've just flipped the pizza base so that I can dry and cook the underneath. I don't want it too soggy. And once again, I've put on my circle of baking paper. It's working a little bit. I don't want the ends to cook so much. You don't have to do that. It's probably a little bit of messing around, but I, you know, I want it to be beautiful for you. Put it back in the oven a little bit longer. So let's prepare our pizza toppings. I'm gonna to put some beetroot on there roasted sweet potato, which is still in the oven, an assortment of colored peppers, cherry tomatoes, and some fresh tomatoes. Top and tail the beetroot and peel it. And it's really just because I really like the bright color. 
You could add pesto to this pizza as well. But if you're adding pesto, I'd put that on at the end as a garnish because you don't want to cook the pesto. It's such a beautiful, bright, vibrant green color that it would go a bit gray after it was cooked. Okay. This is a mandolin. It gives nice, fine slices, finer than I can cut them with a knife. And it's fun. <laughs> okay. I don't need that much, but I got a bit carried away. Hey, you could make your own pickled beetroot just as you get out of a tin. So in Australia, a proper hamburger is not a hamburger unless it has beetroot. So even if you're presenting a veggie burger and there was no beetroot, I'd be like, where's the beetroot? Pickle it with some vinegar, olive oil, salt. That would be beautiful. Now for my onions, which I'll also finely slice with the mandolin. So if you were waiting for me to get the musical instrument out, no, not that piano accordion. I'm in this thing here. And it comes with a variety of attachments. Perfect if your knife skills aren't that on point. So once again, I'm using the red onion because it's such a great color. And they're less pungent than some of those brown onions or white onions. That's just to protect the fingers. So use a pepper or a capsicum that's not hot. And I've chosen these because I want little rings actually. Always keep the fingertips tucked away, butt the knife up against the knuckle. I am a bit of a clumsy person, so before I learnt this technique, yes, I did chop bits of my finger off, but fortunately they regenerated. So put whatever you like on your pizza. If you want some mushrooms on there, um, maybe some marinated vegetables, some marinated eggplant would be great, marinated artichoke, any of those things. I'm gonna garnish this with fresh basil, which I've picked from the garden this morning. So I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. Um, maybe I'll put something else on, but I'll see how that goes to start with. We're going to make the tomato pizza base sauce. Now I will show you later on in this series how you can make a raw one out of fresh tomatoes and also some freshly dried tomatoes. However, because this pizza is baked to begin with, I don't think it's necessary to go to that extent. I'm just going to use some tomato paste, some organic tomato paste, mix it with some garlic and olive oil, maybe a little bit of oregano and that's it. Then we'll spread that on our base and we're ready to go.
So the ingredients of this is only tomatoes anyway. So these garlic cloves are so small. Uh, we were talking about the size of vegetables. So I've seen garlic cloves singularly that are twice the size of that. So only one clove of garlic, but these were babies. So I'm putting two. Done. A little bit of olive oil and some salt. Maybe a teaspoon. Mix that up. And by now, I think my pizza's ready. So many layers of flavor to this. Now I stand corrected. I just learned that apart from a mandolin being a beautiful slicing device, it's a guitar, not a piano accordion. My apologies to any musicians out there. Let's get the pizza base out of the oven. So despite my little precautions, it did blow around and the edge that that paper blew around. It is a little bit crusty, but it's okay. And I did flip this halfway through to help with the drying. I'm sure you've done this before. If you've made pizza at home, it's the same steps. Pretty much the only thing that's different is that this doesn't have wheat. It doesn't have any dairy products. So it's free from cheese. And there's no meat, of course, this is vegan. Also, the thing I like about those tiny little organic cans of tomato paste, it's just the right amount. If you buy tomato paste in larger bottles, which is more economical, it's what I do, I freeze the excess in little cupcake molds, those silicon cupcake molds. So I put a couple of tablespoons in each one, and then once it's frozen, I pop them out and put them into Ziploc bags back in the freezer, and then I've got tomato paste whenever I need it. So just a little way to save money, be a little bit more thrifty. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's assemble the vegetables. The more you can incorporate familiar naughty foods into your diet with a healthier twist, the more likely you are to continue on this healthy eating pathway. And you might be convinced by the merits of being healthy, being paleo, gluten-free, vegan, but maybe your family is a little bit more difficult to convince. So when they come home, what are we having for dinner tonight, mum? We're having pizza. And they're like, oh, thank goodness. But if you said we're having kale salad, that might be um, a hard pill to swallow. Little do they know, in this pizza, there's actually going to be kale on top of it. 
So I'm just making any kind of pattern here, like a mandala. I'm not sure if I'm succeeding, but... It's looking like a pretty flower. Oh, what else do I need to put on there? Something in the middle. These are my sweet potatoes that I cooked earlier. They've got a little bit of salt and olive oil, but because they don't need further cooking, I'm just gonna put them on at the end. So the end, I'll put the basil, the sweet potato, maybe a little bit of pesto. But I want that to roast a little bit now. Maybe 10 minutes should be enough. It's pizza time, I can smell that it's ready. Wow, it's looking great. I love that little shriveled look of the tomatoes. Contrasted with their juicy interior. So a few little things that I'm going to add. Some sweet potatoes. Which were roasted I add a little bit of olive oil and salt at the end. Oil and salt makes everything better, right? Ah, let's just go with the hands. Some olives, some Kalamata olives as well as some green ones. Some fresh sprigs of basil. This basil's from the garden. <laughs> it's growing, it's so old that it's growing into a bit of a tree. I like it. I meant that the plant is old, not this actual basil. I just picked it this morning. <laughs> So did you know if you want your basil plant to keep producing new growth, a little trim, and especially if it's starting to seed, if it's going to grow flowers at the top, that means the plant's going to seed. So just cut them off, throw them back into your garden. So one last, oh, two last final things. So I'm going to put on some kale. Now this has a cheesy flavour because it was coated in the yeast flakes. So that's what I'm putting on instead of cheese. And then the final thing would be to grate a little bit of macadamia nut on top, which I'll do at the end. And then a tiny little bit of 
pesto dotted. Wow, can you believe that this is only vegetables? Only plant-based in this whole pizza. I've gone to town, you don't need to put as much on top as me, but delicious. Let's go outside and eat this. Come with me.